بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم بارك لنبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my brothers my sisters Islam welcome back after a day of break uh, to our stories of the Quran tafsir of Surah Taha my brothers my sisters Islam uh, yesterday alhamdulillah we had a very amazing uh, night of power Arabic where some of the great scholars of Islam uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Muhammad uh, bin Hassan al Dado, Sheikh uh, Muhammad al Arifi, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin al Ahmed, Sheikh uh, Hassan Husseini. So many scholars of Islam were there and they spoke and then they, they benefited the people and thousands of people, Alhamdulillah, logged on. Uh, it was the first time we tried this in Arabic. Alhamdulillah, it worked really well and I'm really thankful to Allah. Uh, I thank Allah for, for choosing us for this uh, and I ask my brothers and sisters Islam to continue to benefit from this. Uh, and uh, and and uh, inshallah there is another night of power coming up inshallah uh, night of power conference coming up uh, which is uh, on saturday inshallah i'll give you more details about it later inshallah it's coming up and uh, please you need to benefit from that uh, ikhwani uh, we are now uh, in the last 10 nights and we really need to take advantage of these nights of ramadan it's an odd night tonight uh, it's the 21st night in the authentic hadith uh, in Bukhari. Uh, we find that the Layl of the Qadr uh, on one of the particular days of the uh, one, one of the particular years of the Prophet Sallallahu time in uh, in Medina uh, on one of the day, uh, well, on one of the uh, one of the years Layl of the Qadr was on the 21st night. So don't belittle, and that's why uh, my advice is to wake up all the nights in prayer. Uh, and be around good people, stay away from bad people. If you can make ethika for a part of the day or some of the time or even the weekend, then do so. Uh, the strongest opinion, which is the opinion of the Shafi Madhab and the opinion of Sheikh bin Baz rahimullah, and others is that there is no minimum duration for ethika, no minimum duration, even if it's for a few hours, even if it's for half a day, even if it's for a day. So even if you could go to the masjid and say, listen, this is it, I'm doing ethika, then alhamdulillah, that's acceptable. Ala kulli hal, we'll talk about that later. Uh, but uh, and also one more thing I guess I would like to tell you before I get started is uh, I know that you know we all of us give a lot of sadaqah and charity uh, please consider giving it to those places that feed people uh, and that's very very important and uh, I think I think well alhamdulillah if we can try and solve one problem at a time uh, hunger is the most important problem at the moment uh, Syria uh, you know people are hungry they just need food uh, same thing in Iraq same thing in uh, <coughs> uh, Indonesia and Africa, hundreds of millions of people are Muslim today are, are chronically hungry and because it's a month of staying away from food, let's uh, take the primary benefit of this month and you know donate to places and, 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 and causes that can actually solve the hunger problem. Uh, we also run a charity called Charity Right, uh, so charityright.org.uk and you can go and find out more details there. One of the advices that I had when I spoke about this charity is that because we've got 10 nights coming up and what we should do is to if we let's say have a thousand pounds to give uh, what we should try and do is give a hundred pounds each each night yeah give hundred pounds each night the benefit of that is that you will definitely then inshallah catch later the qadr inshallah uh, because because if you say okay look i'm only gonna, only gonna give on the 27th night what if the 27th night is not the night of the qadr you know uh, what if it was 25th what if it was 23rd or 24th even um, and so what do you do well uh, you'll lose out right so it's best to divide up the the charity 100 100 100 100 100 100, 100. and so whatever the the cause you know uh, you will win inshallah ta'ala you know in betting that's what they say that when you bet you don't put everything on one card you spread it the bets out especially when the uh, whatever wins that you do will make up for any loss that you had and of course, there's no loss at all. Allah can accept even one, one, one dollar. And uh, one dollar given at any time can earn you Jannah, Alhamdulillah. And even you have to be like the Qadr night. But, you know, great opportunity to increase in ajr and reward, inshallah. Tayyip, let's come back to our surah. We have surah Taha today. Excuse me. We have surah Taha today. Surah Taha was definitely re revealed before the... Uh, the Islam of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu which was in the fifth year of the Prophet sallallahu uh, becoming a prophet and Surah Taha 
uh, alhamdulillah uh, is uh, is a surah and the story of the conversion of Umar was very amazing Umar radiyallahu ta'ala uh, some of his uh, family members went off to Habasha so he became very sad then he came to his uh, you know then he got really angry as they were going and uh, he started walking people said where are you going Umar I'm going to kill Muhammad I said well, you know before you kill him why don't you go and uh, you know uh, do something to your own family. We hear that Fatima and Saif, your uh, Sayyid, your uh, brother-in-law has become Muslim. So he became even more fuming. So he went to his uh, sister, w went in, saw signs of uh, Islam on her, uh, hit her until blood poured out, hit his uh, brother-in-law and said, why, why have you become Muslim? They said, yes, we've become Muslim and we believe in Allah. Uh, so he said, okay, show me why. Show me what, what you've been given. So she said, uh, not yet, you're not pure, go and take a shower. She so took a shower, came back and uh, she produced uh, a, uh, a leather uh, parchment, parchment on which was written Surah Taha. Taha. This is the Surah. And it's amazing. Ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'an litashqa. We have not revealed this Qur'an to you so that you may be in distress. Illa tathkiratan liman yakhsha. Except as a warning and as a remembrance for the one who has fear you know, of Allah in the heart. Yani, wow. Ya Rab, how gentle are you, Ya Rab? How beautifully have you introduced fear of Allah and you've given us beautiful advice. Say, Ikhwani, my brothers, my sisters, Islam, uh, uh, Surah Taha was revealed at that time, of course, and then, Alhamdulillah, Umar said, that's the first time I felt Iman in my heart. And then, of course, he went and he accepted Islam, Alhamdulillah. My brothers and sisters Islam, Taha uh, is a surah that contains the story of Musa salam. It was revealed at that time when the Quraysh were persecuting the Prophet salam. So Allah Zawajal, through showing the story of Musa tried to explain to the people of Quraysh that hey listen, uh, Musa salam, was an underdog but he won finally and he defeated even Fir'aun. So know that the Prophet salam, is an underdog at the moment but then he will definitely win and that if you continue to be arrogant, then your fate will be the same as Fir'aun. And then the surah will end by mentioning uh, beautiful evidences of the, of the proof of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a story of Adam and, Adam and uh, the shaitan. Uh, and with that, Allah Zawajal will finish off the surah. Let's take the surah. It's a beautiful story of Musa salam, and alhamdulillah, something that will inshallah increase our knowledge. Now, who was Musa? Musa was one of the prophets of God, one of the messengers of God, one of the five messengers. And he was chosen by Allah Zawajal with nine miracles. And one of the miracles on top of these nine miracles was that Allah Zawajal chose Musa to be someone who Allah speaks to directly. And the fact that Allah speaks is an evidence that Allah speaks with sound and Allah Zawajal speaks with voice and Allah Zawajal speaks with, uh, with words. Uh, and all of this is an evidence uh, that Allah Zawajal, uh, alhamdulillah, truly had a uh, had a proper speech with with Musa. Allah says in the Quran, "Wa kallam Allahu Musa taklima," and Allah Zawajal spoke to Musa uh, taklima, meaning with a normal conversation. So, uh, Ikhwani, uh, Musa alayhi uh, salam was chosen uh, to be one of the messengers of Allah Zawajal uh, to Banu uh, to Banu Israel. Uh, and Banu Israel were the children of Israel, and Israel was uh, was uh, Ishaq, uh, and it was was Yaqub, uh, and Yaqub alayhi had the twelve sons from which came the different tribes of Israel from in, uh, from where the uh, the lineage started, and Musa alayhi was sent to them. So Musa alayhi was from that lineage as well. Uh, so what actually happened? Uh, let's start the story, inshallah. Let's not give it away. Let's start the story. The story will explain itself. Taha. These are the mystical, miracle words. And I, 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 my apologies, it is not mystical, it's miraculous words which point back to the Quran. And that's why very, very soon after, Allah refers in the very next verse, usually refers back to the Quran. Taha. Ma anzalna alayka al Quran litashqa. So that's why the Quran is being mentioned straight away. So we have not revealed alayk, wa anzalna, meaning we have this sent down. And the word anzalna is an evidence that therefore Allah is above and that he sends down things. So Allah is in, in the direction of up and he's above us. Ma anzalna and then he sends down alayka upon you al-Quran. The Quran is called Quran because it is a book that is meant to be read. 
لِتَشْقَى meaning so that you may be in distress. We didn't reveal this Qur'an so that you may have difficulty with all the actions piling up. We didn't reveal this Qur'an so that it's full of adab, adab, punishment, punishment. Rather, we have made it equal. Equal mention of Jannah, Jahannam. Equal mention of peace and war. Equal mention of reward and, uh, and uh, punishment. مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ لِتَشْقَى We have not revealed this Qur'an to you so that you have been distressed. إِلَّا تَذْكِرَةً Except that we send this down with the impure intention of تَذْكِرَةً which is a remembrance. لِمَا يَخْشَى For the one who fears me. تَنْزِيلًا It is a tanzil. That's why one of the names of the book of Qur'an is his tanzil. So tanzil means something which has been sent down. And that's why the hadith is a tanzil. Iron is a tanzil. And so is uh, the Qur'an. And you know when Allah says, وَأَنزَلْنَا الْحَدِيدَ فِيهِ بَأْسٌ شَدِيدٌ And we have uh, revealed iron, or we have sent down iron in which there is بَأْسٌ uh, شديد, a very uh, a strong uh, use. Uh, the scholars of the past were like, okay, أَنزَلْنَا here, so it means it's sent down, but that means iron came from outer space, or yeah, okay, we believe in it, we don't know how, but we believe in it. And modern science proves that iron ore actually could not be made on the heat that's available in the in the earth, it actually had to be made through fusion, the energy of fusion and the energy, the heat that is required to form the atom of iron cannot have happened in, on earth. It must have been that the, these miracles, these minerals came from over, outer space. And so when Allah says, وَأَنزَلْ hadith, it's clear, it definitely وَأَنزَلْ hadith. And when Allah says, says, وَأَنزَلْ وَتَنزِيلَا Meaning that's also very clear, must be something that's sent down, from up to down. Tanzila mimman khalaq al arda from the one who has created the earth, was samawat and the heavens, al ula that is very high. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the earth and the heavens that are very high, and it is a tanzila, a book that is sent down from Him. Ar Rahman, glory be to Allah, Ar Rahman, the most merciful, al al arsh, upon the throne, istawa, He rose up over. Yani Ar Rahman, al al arsh, upon His throne. What is the arsh again? The arsh is the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal. And is it a real thing? Absolutely. Is it a real throne? Absolutely. Or is it metaphorical? Majaz? No, it's a real throne. And the, what's the proof of that? Because first of all, it's called an arsh. Therefore, the asal in Arabic language is that it goes back to the real original meaning of what the Arabic language means. So al, -al, -al arsh means throne. Uh, is there any particular evidence to say that no, this is not a throne, it's something else? No, not at all. In fact, all the hadith of Rasulullah point to the fact that this is uh, arsh. And also that the verses in the Quran point to the fact that it is a proper throne. What's the what what verse? Inna al-ladina yahminun al-arsha wa man hawla. Surah Ghafir. Inna al-ladina yahminun al-arsha wa man hawla. Verily those who carry the arsh of al-Rahman, meaning the angels that carry the weight of the burden of the arsh of al-Rahman, wa man hawla, and those who are around them. <coughs> Excuse me. In the angels that are around. <coughs> They praise Allah and they uh, glorify His remembrance. So therefore, all of that shows that the Arsh is an actual throne of Allah. Al Arsh. Then the word Istawa. Istawa means that He rose up above. Uh, rose up above in a manner which befits the, man, uh, the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we can't explain how, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose up above the throne and He has chosen that for Himself. And that is called istiwa. So how do we understand this? We understand this as seven heavens. Above the seven heavens is Jannah. Above Jannah or Firdaus al-A'la. Firdaus al-A'la. Above that are angels. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, above that is water. وَعَرْشُهُ عَلَى الْمَا Allah says in the Quran. So above that is water. What is this water? Only Allah knows. Allah says water. Wallahu ta'ala how, where, no, Allah says, عَرْشُهُ عَلَى الْمَا And His Arsh is on the water. So above Firdaus al-A'la is water. On top of the water are the angels that are carrying the Arsh of Al-Rahman, which is eight in number. And surrounding them all, these are the angels praising Allah. And then above them is the Arsh of Allah Yeah, Above them is the Arsh of Allah. And above the Arsh is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as you can see, Allah is so mighty subhanAllah. لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ And for him, by the way, regarding Al-Arsh, the scholars of Islam said that Arsh is something which is the most heaviest thing in, 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 the, in the creation. What is the evidence for that? 
the evidence for that is in the uh, hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu where the Prophet sallallahu said subhanallah wa bihamdihi adada khalqihi rida nafsihi zinat arshihi with the kalimat glory be to Allah subhanallah wa bihamdihi and his praise adada khalqihi by the number of his creation wa midada kalimat by the number of his words wa zinat arshihi and by the weight of his arsh so here Allah is, the Prophet was chosen the highest number possible for all things and therefore he mentions Zinat Arshi, the weight of his throne. Yeah? So the Arsh of Ar-Rahman is very heavy and that's why when in the authentic hadith when the angels who were the Hamalat Al-Arsh were told to carry the Arsh of Allah they said, how Ya Rabbi are we going to do this? So Allah says, say uh, uh, in the name of Allah, you know, and then Bismillah, Tawakkaltu Allah, in the name of Allah. And then they, then they, alhamdulillah, they took the arsh of Allah, eight of them carrying the arsh of Allah. So, uh, 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 so this, this is the arsh of Allah. The arsh of Allah is the largest thing in existence as well. We know the Prophet said the example is earth, comparison to the kursi is like a, a small ring thrown into a desert. Then example of this kursi compared to the arsh of Allah is like the small ring thrown, that small ring thrown into another bigger desert. So as you can see, it's like a ring that's thrown into a big desert, which is almost like a tiny thing that is thrown into another one. So Arsh of Allah is huge. Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa. Lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-Ard. For him is whatever is in the samawat, the skies, wa ma fi al-Ard, that which is on the earth, wa ma baynahuma, that which is in between, wa ma tahta thara, that which is under the soil. So he, for him is everything. وَإِن تَجْهَرْ And if you were to, and just to show you that not only to Allah belongs uh, the space uh, by way of uh, the physically, but also Allah Azawajal has total control in that space, total senses, and is perfecting his senses in that space. وَإِن تَجْهَرْ بِالْقَوْلِ And if you were to publicly raise your voice and speak loudly, فَإِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ السِّرَّ وَأَخْوَى Then don't, then know this. That Allah is most aware of the secret speech and the light speech. Meaning whether you say it loudly or you say it quietly, that Allah is most aware of it. Allahu la ilaha illahu. Allah, there is no deity worthy of worship but He. And this is the kalima of Tawheed, Ya Khwani. Um, this is the baqiyat of salihat. This is the uh, good deeds that will remain. This is the greatest uh, thing that the Anbiya and Prophets have said. This is, Ya Khwani, the Kalimah the Tawheed that divides between a Muslim and non-Muslim. For this, people have spilled blood defending themselves, uh, defending this, this Shahada, and others have killed because they hate this Shahada. What does the Shahada mean? La Allahu, Allah, La Ilaha. There is no deity, so starts with a negation. No deity worthy of worship, Illahu, except for him. Except for him. So therefore, this is the kalima al tawheed negation and affirmation. Lahul asma al husna for him is the most beautiful names, meaning so call upon Allah through those beautiful names. Alhamdulillah. Wahal attack hadith of Musa and has a story of hadith of the story of Musa come to you. Idra'a, this is Musa bin Amran. Idra'a naran, and when he saw the fire, فَقَالَ لِأَهْلِهِ said to his people أُمْكُثُوا meaning stay here for a while إِنِّي أَنَسْتُ نَارًا I can see a light, a fire لَعَلِّ آتِيكُمْ perhaps that I will also bring back a burning coal so that we could also have some light that could give us a bit of safety from insects and everything else and we could also be warm at the night right لَعَلِّ آتِيكُمْ بِقَبَسِينَ أَوْ أَجِدُ عَلَى النَّارِ هُدَى or I'll find some sort of guidance at the light so what happened was that this incident of Hal Atta Hadith of Musa starts off when the where Prophet Musa Islam, after having given ten years of service to Shuaib radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, and his wife uh, Safura uh, and they have children now. And from that time for after ten years, whilst the Prophet uh, Ibrahim uh, Prophet Musa was was in Median uh, and he had married uh, Safura, the, the daughter of uh, Shu'aib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And whilst he was there, then it was at that time that this miracle happened. What was a miracle? Saw a light, went to get it, told the family stay there. When he went there, a voice spoke out. What was the voice? Falamma uh, ataha. So when he came to, towards that light, ataha, a voice spoke out. 
Nudiya Musa. She said, Oh Musa, Inni ana Rabbuka, verily I am your Lord. Fakhla'na alayk. So now remove your sandals. Inna kabil wadi, verily you are in at the wadi, which is a valley, al muqaddas a sacred valley called Tuwa. Called Tuwa. Tuwa is a sacred valley which is near Mount Sinai. And this is, uh, which is in Median. And this is the valley where. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Musa a prophet and a messenger. And what about ikhlana alayk? What about remove your shoes? Well, remove your shoes, this was the madhab of the Jews. The Jews do not worship Allah with shoes on. Uh, the Prophet sallam, said in authentic hadith in Abu Dawood, he said, uh, be different from the Jews uh, and who do not pray with their shoes on. So that's, that shows that therefore it is permissible to pray with our shoes on. However, when you go to masjids and we have nice carpets to keep it clean, it makes sense to take your shoes off. But every single day, if you pray, uh, or if you're in the park, or you're on the ground, should you take your shoes off and pray? No, not at all. You should wear your shoes and pray. In fact, I do, I do it many times. In fact, was authentically reported that the Prophet ﷺ in Sahih Bukhari and others, the authentic hadith that showed that the Prophet ﷺ did indeed pray with his shoes on. Uh, and this is something, therefore, we should try to be different from the Jews uh, who do not pray with their shoes on. فَخْلَعْنَ عَلَيْكَ Verily remove your na'al إِنَّكَ بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ تُوَى And no one should be able to use this verse as evidence that we should remove it because this is the sharia of the people of the past and that was their sharia. Their sharia was that you have to remove your shoes before you worship Allah. إِنَّكَ بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ تُوَى Verily you are in the sacred valley of of Tuwa. وَأَنَا اخْتَرْتُكَ فَاسْتَمْعَ لِمَا يُوحَى And verily I have chosen you. So listen to what I am revealing to you. إِنِّي أَنَا اللَّهِ And he subhanAllah. You know I still remember uh, Sheikh Ahmed, uh, Sheikh, uh, uh, you know, Didat, Ahmed Didat, Rahimahullah, who said, you know, show me one verse, show me one verse in the Bible where Jesus Christ says, I am God, worship me. You know, you'd expect that this is the most important reason that you've been sent, right? So, you know, make this clear to people. So, uh, he said that not one single verse, you know, I still remember when I was get, becoming practicing and I was, I was a camera crew for Sheikh Ahmed Didat, rahimahullah, uh, when he first came to Australia. And I was a young, young man at that time. And uh, I still remember Sheikh Ahmed Didat, rahimahullah, Allah forgive him. What a beautiful man. He gave us izzah and honor. He, you know, he gave us strength. And we miss our father, Shaykh Ahmed Didat, rahimahullah, rahmatan wasi'ah. Yes, salam. So, here Allah Azza wa Jal actually says, Inni ana Allahu la ilaha illa ana. Yeah? Something which, not one verse like this in a whole of Bible, but look at Quran. Inni ana Allah. So he spoke out and he said, Verily, I am Allah. La ilaha illa ana. There is no deity worthy of worship except me. فَعْبُدْنِي So worship me. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ And establish the prayer لِذِكْرِي For my remembrance. Yes. So, worship me. And very straight after that, Musa والسلام, was told to pray. So, ikhwani, yani, when you think about it, and especially this month of Ramadan, yani, if we haven't renewed our energy and our, uh, our desire, connection with Allah Zawajal, through our salah, what exactly have we done? What exactly have we achieved? What sort of habit have we formed? Uh, if we're still delaying our salawat, then that's really bad. And uh, if the prophets of the past were told about prayer, and he shows the importance of it. Inna sa'ata atiyatun. Verily, the last hour will definitely come. Akadu ukhfiha. I'm about to ukhfiha. I'm about to remove the cover and make it public. Yeah? So ukhfiha. Akad ukhfiha, meaning I'm about to establish it. I'm about to uh, uh, show it to people. Litujaza kullu nafsim, so that every single person is rewarded bima tasha for what they have already done. Meaning the people can be judged with the actions that they have done on this dunya. Fala yasuddannaka anha, so let nothing stop you from this deen and worshipping Allah Zawajal and promoting this deen. Man la yu'minu biha, especially from the people who do not believe in it or believe in the Quran, believe in, uh, in, in, uh, in this worship of Allah. 
who those who have followed their desires fatarda yes fala yasuddannaka anha man la yu'minu biha wattaba hawahu fatarda and therefore they become misguided wa ma tilka bi yaminika ya musa so o oh musa what is in your right hand what is in your right hand what did he have qala ya sahya rabbi this is my staff you know look at the casual conversation with musa you know qala hi asaya rabbi this is my staff atawakkaw alayha i use it to sometimes walk up you know, steep issues and all that wa ahushu biha ala ghanmi ahushu mini i take it and i hit some of the trees and the branches leaves fall down so that my sheep can actually uh, eat and also i use it to hit the sheep and guide it as they are as they are being guided along and i shepherd them waliya fiha ma'arib ukhra and i've got a few other uses for this as well a few other uses qala alqiha ya musa so allah says throw the staff down o musa fa alqaha so he threw it down fa idha hi hayyatun tasha so then it is as if it became a hayya or a uh, a uh, a snake tasa uh, <coughs> that is actually moving around qala khudha wa la takhaf say say go grab it back and don't be afraid so nu'iduha sirata al ula we will now change it back to its original form into the staff right wadhbu bi yadaka ila janahik and put your hand into your chest yakhruj bayda it will come out completely white not cold and uh, it will completely surprise the people that you're looking at it because there's so much light in your hand wadhbu bi yadaka ila janahik takhruj bayda i mean ghayri su without any uh, mistake in it ayat al ukhra as another ayah or a sign from allah li nuriyaka min ayat al kubra so that we may show you from our signs that are the massive signs idhab ila fir'aun innahu tagha verily go to fir'aun for verily he has transgressed all limits innahu tagha all limits qala rabbi now musa alayhi salam asks for a dua and that's why ikhwani Whenever Allah Azza wa Jalla has given you an act of ibadah which is uh, required of you, like Ramadan, for example, or now the last ten nights, uh, Allah has asked of you to worship Him even more harder in the last ten nights. What do you do? Raise your hands up to Allah. Ya Allah, O oh Allah, help me. Aini ala dikri ka wa shukri ka husna bi ibadati. O Allah, give me wealth so I can give in your cause these last ten nights. O oh Allah, keep me with good company in a good masjid, in a place where you love. O oh Allah. let me find like the qadr night so you know you're making dua to allah azza wa jal and that's the right time to do so when allah has already do to, to do something ask allah oh allah help me so that i can actually achieve it inshallah qala wa rawi idhhab ila fir'aun inta qala rabbi shrah li sadri he said oh allah make my chest uh, yani clean and shrah li sadri meaning expand my chest expand my chest ya rab doesn't mean to make me fat it means oh allah remove the constrictedness that i have the narrow thinking the lack of positivity replace it with positivity replace it re- remove the negativity remove the sign of shaitan in the heart uh, give me all all of the uh, uh, positive skills that i need rabb ishrah li sadri oh allah remove the depression from my heart put in it positivity and iman and strength and uh, and urgency ورب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري ان ميك ماي افير ايزي او الله هيلب مي يا الله واحلل عقده من لساني ان ريموف ذا عقده فروم ذا لسان ذا ديفيكولتي فروم ذا تونغ يا اند ذا ان ابيليتي تو تو سبيك وذاوت ستاترينج اند ستامرينج اند سو موسى عليه السلام هاد ذات بروبلم ذات هي وود هاف ا ديفيكولتي ان بروناونسينج ووردز سام تايمز اسبيشلي وين هي از انجري اور ستريسد So O oh Allah wahlul uqdatam min lisani remove that from distress from my tongue yafqahu qawli so that they may understand me wash wa ja'al li waziran min ahli and it's very important ya rab give me a helper a waziran min ahli from my own family harun akhi harun my brother ushdud bihi azri meaning i will strengthen my back with him meaning i need someone who's got my back who will be defending me who will be helping me Yeah, wash, wash, wa ashriku fi amri, and I will involve you in my affair. Kain usabbi haka kathira, so that we may be able to praise you a lot. Wa nafkura kathira, that we may remember you a lot. 
إِنَّكَ كُنْتَ بِنَا بَصِيرًا Verily you are most aware of all of the things that we do. قَالَ قَدْ أُوْتِيْتَ سُؤْلَكَ يَا مُوسَى And we will come to this tomorrow. Inshallah we will stop here. Uh, and and uh, inshallah from, from uh, verse number 36 we will restart tomorrow. Ya khwani, <coughs> I think this dua of Musa salam needs a lot of reflection. Because look at the positivity and the courage of this man. He knew he was ill-equipped. He knew he didn't have a friend, he was poor, he doesn't have someone to support him, doesn't have a PA, he doesn't have a team. Uh, he also knows that he has certain hindrances that will stop him from being ever perceived seriously or uh, taken into account by others and, you know, uh, trusted. So he asked Allah for that. And also, uh, there is more. Uh, he has asked uh, for Allah's mercy and his rahmah so that this actual thing can, uh, can happen, inshallah. And uh, finally, uh, he's given a reason why he wants this. Ya Rab, Ya Rab, I want to build a masjid, not because I just, you know, because I'm competing with others, but because I really desperately want to come on the Day of Judgment and, you know, you have a home for me there, Ya Rab, you know? So, this is really critical, my brothers and sisters in Islam, that you understand this important point, uh, that when you make dua to Allah, Zawajal, then learn from the dua of Musa, Islam. Number one, he asked straight after, when he was obligated to do something. Number two, uh, he had a plan of action. He was already working towards it. Number three, uh, he has, uh, yes, he has uh, shown or spoken to Allah in his dua why he's asking it. So he's showing that, Ya Rab, I'm not just asking this just, you know, because I can. I'm asking because there's a desperate real need. And so I need your help and support, Ya Rabbul Alameen, if you ask me to do this, inshallah. So this is the fiqh of dua of the dua of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, if Allah wills, we're going to come to the situation where we start talking about the story of Musa as Allah moves the scene off from Madian now, where he is now, and we'll tell him to go back to Egypt and we'll move the scene back to Egypt many years back, almost like, you know, in some certain movies, you know, you say, okay, 15 years ago, this is this case, you know. So the screen blanks out. And it goes 20 years ago, 15 years ago, yeah? So the story goes back to when Musa was born and how Fir'aun wanted to destroy everything and how uh, Allah Zawajal saved, saved Musa Islam, and kept his mother happy. Thank you. Zakum uh, khair, ikhwani. Alhamdulillah, such a great feeling to be in the last 10 nights. Ya Rab, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, give us the chance of Laylat Qadr. Ya Rab, if it is tonight, Ya Rab, write for us freedom from Jahannam, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, freedom from Jahannam, Ya Rab. Zakmullah khair. Thank you, my friends. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.